Okay, welcome to another Orbiter video. And in this series, we are revisiting the ISS to Station 5 challenge mission that Dimitri put together. Thank you again, Dimitri. I love all these cool scenarios you put together. And uh, we've tackled this mission once before. And the last time we did it, we raised our orbit way out, did a plane change, came back down. This time we are lowering our orbit. We're getting down to the atmosphere and we're using the dynamic pressure of the upper atmosphere to help steer ourselves uh, uh, through the plane alignment. So let's go ahead and jump back into our flight. Let me switch camera views here and get back inside the XR2. So when we left off in the last video, we had just uh, completed our second pass and we're climbing out from that second pass. And let me get a little bit farther around. Let's say out to Let's say, let's just go for like the halfway point. So halfway between the nodes, about right there. So at this point, we'll go ahead and uh, consider what kind of fuel usage we had on the second pass. So let me switch over to burn time calculator. And so we have DV plus RCS, yes. Okay, so we have 8,349, 8,349. So let's switch over here, so after after the second pass, we had 8,349. Uh, Let me just double check that. 8,349, that's correct. So let's see, how much fuel did that use? So let me read one of my formula here. 59 minus 60 minus 61 minus 8,349. So that time we used 349 meters per second so so that's fairly consistent a little bit more than the previous flight but that I think makes sense because on this one we started at a higher APA so our current rink is 43.17 you can see that right here 43.17 and let's see how much gain that was so let's take 56. 05 minus 43.17 so on that pass we got a 12.88 gain so a little we did a little bit better than that pass all right so that's how our numbers are stacking up so far and i need to remember to look at the preview window because i noticed in a couple of my videos i can see more of this than you guys can and i unfortunately had some of this off the screen but uh so so that's where we stand right now and let's actually so currently we've used let's just take a look we've used 329 plus 349 so we have and let's see we have gained 10.26 plus 12.88 we've gained 23.14 degrees of plane change using 678 meters of delta v how much would we have spent so far for a 23.14 degree uh, change using these numbers 23.14 actually that's not the calculator i want this is one i'm working on and this is the one i want but these are the numbers i want and what was that 23.14 so it would have cost us over 3000 delta v to do to do that 23.14 so you can see you know it's a huge huge improvement all right let me i guess i'll keep that stuff up there for now all right but let's go ahead and switch camera views and get back into it for pass number three and if uh if the if we if we're doing approximately 10 to 12 each time we're going to have a few more passes than than three and four so let's uh let's get into it all right now let me bring up orbit mfd so we are let me get uh let me get a little bit closer to the uh to the node but uh not i don't want to pass apoapsis so let's get a bit closer over here okay and let me switch to this hud and let's go prograde i'll go ahead and use the autopilot because i didn't do this far enough in advance and luckily we're pretty close in fact let me turn that off just stay in this orientation because each time we're doing this we're coming around to the ascending node so we always want to be 
wings level in this position. And we want to go outward. Because if, we go, if we're outward, we can push our apoapsis farther out ahead of us, and that's what we want to do. We want to make sure that the apoapsis and the time that we uh, arrive at the descending node are matched really closely. That way, when we adjust our periapsis, our periapsis will be adjusted. Oops, I passed it. Our periapsis will be adjusted at, uh, like right at the ascending node. And all of this is part of pass three's cost. Okay, so right about there, and now a little bit of main engine. Start moving that apoapsis out in front of us, and again, we're going for about 500. Uh, well, you know, we want them to match, so however they line up at the point that they match. And we're driving up our PEA a little bit at the same time, that's fine, that's actually what I want to have happen. Because I want my PEA to be about, about 75 kilometers, that seems to be working for us, so... If it's, uh, if it's working, don't fix it. I think that's the saying. Now the PEA is going down a little bit, so I need to rotate a bit more inward. Okay, so we're about 480, about 140, so a bit more to go. But I don't want to rotate too far inward, because then my PEA is going to climb really fast. And I also want to make sure which side of the line I am on, on so I don't mess up my my relative inclination while or my uh, yeah, I don't want to mess up my relative inclination while I'm doing this. Okay, PEA is coming up slowly to 50, 450, so a bit more to go to bring those together. And all the fuel that I'm burning now is going to be considered, you know, part of the fuel usage for pass number three. So we're at 315, 430, so a bit more to go. Maybe start heading back this way a little bit, because I think the PEA is coming up faster than these numbers are coming together. Oh, now the PEA is going down, don't want that. Okay, so we're at 4. 10 on that side, 380 on that side, so we're pretty close to converging. All right, oh, cancel. So 404, it's really close. All right, now let's get over to Apoapsis. Yeah, these are, I think they're a second apart, but it's certainly close enough for what we're doing here. All right, let's get over to Apoapsis, and at that point, we will bring up our PEA to 75. <clears throat> I would like to press the prograde autopilot, but if I do, it's going to rotate my vessel, and there's no point in having it do that. So, but I just, I just want it to be held. All right, so 360 seconds to go until... until we're at Apoapsis. Let me go ahead and warp time forward to get closer come out of time warp all right come all the way out of time warp and get a bit closer here oops about right there okay now translation. switch to translation and as we get bit closer to time to the apoapsis, we'll go ahead and use translation thrusters, maybe even a little bit of main, but I think mainly translation. See, so yeah, I'm just translating now a little bit. Time to the apoapsis is still coming down, so we're not doing this too soon. And now we're right at apoapsis, so let me go ahead and use a little bit of main engine just to get this a little bit faster. And can clean up the rest of there, get the difference there with translation. Okay, so that, that took a little bit longer that time to get all that sorted out, but uh, we're on track. So let's go ahead. And what's our apoapsis? So we're about 280 again, so it's about the same as it was last time. 
So that means we should be encountering the atmosphere at about the same point. Let's uh, go ahead and switch views here, or switch uh, HUDs. Warp time four, get down to the atmosphere. <clears throat> and once again, you know, we dialed in our center of gravity and everything the very on the very first pass, so we don't really have to mess with that, but I think what I might try to do, since 15.0 is perfect, and we saw in the last video we were a little bit over that, you know, not by much in, and I would probably even advise against messing with it. So I'm going to mess with it. And just to see if I can get it a little bit closer to perfection. All right, but we do need to be probably below 85 kilometers before we start messing with it, because otherwise the differences are so gradual that we're not going to notice them. Okay, so we are coming down into um, yeah we're probably low enough now we can go ahead and start fiddling around Rotation. so let me go into this view for a moment because here we're going to get our extra decimal points of precision so uh, let me turn off that kill rotate a little bit of time warp kill rotate again I do want to let it settle into position You see, so you know, we're bouncing back and forth between a couple of numbers there. So let me go ahead and start rotating out a little bit. All right, kill rotate, and now I just need to be hands off for a moment, just to give the vessel time to settle into whatever position it wants to be in. And yeah, it looks to me like it's closer to 15.1, 15.2. So that tells me I need to take out just eight any amount of center of gravity and that's going to be really hard to do so what I probably want is negative 0 0.038 or something like that I wish I could type in the number but uh, you can't do it as far as I know so let me turn on the the uh, APU let me center this out huge mistake shouldn't have done it too late and alt Alright, 3.7, maybe that'll work. Let's, let me turn off the APU. Let's see where it settles in when we're at negative 0 0.371. I have a suspicion now it's going to be settling at like 14.9. Or, well, okay, let me... Yeah, I just... Oh, wait, let me rotate out. So we need to get our vertical speed dealt with. So we're still 15.1, 15.2, but all right, let's start rolling out. About right there feels like a pretty good spot. So I got a little bit lower that time, but not too bad. Now again, I just kind of want to see where the vessel is going to settle in terms of the APA or a AOA. So, okay, so I didn't overdo it. I was worried, I was a little worried that I went a bit too low. So it looks like it's settling in a bit closer to where we want. I'm not going to mess with it anymore beyond that point unless I notice that it's especially bad. But I'm going to switch views here. So we have orbit, HUD up. And now as we're approaching the node, I'm going to put in just a little bit of main engine. That's going to bring our rate down a little bit. And it's going to help prevent our orbit from decaying too much. I do wish that surface NFD showed that extra decimal point. Let me see here, 14, probably, that's probably, uh, four, let me see, 2, 6, 8, 15, exactly, 2, 6, 8, yeah, so probably, yeah, I'm still just a little bit above 15 exactly. So I can still take out a little bit more on the center of gravity shift. But let me, it's more important to pay attention to some of these other things right now. So we're getting about 0 0.021 
and that will that should continue to go farther into the negative as we get closer oh you know what oh man I rolled out too much I'm getting so distracted with other things oh man that that's gonna cost me that's gonna cost me boy that was yeah this pass mm, it's not looking like a good one because I got so distracted with other stuff. Should not have messed with the. Uh, should not have messed with the AOA. It was fine where it was. But now I'm just trying to get my vertical speed down into the negative so I can get some benefit out of this pass. And I'm at 78 kilometers as I'm passing the node. That's terrible. But luckily I caught it and we are able to go back down. Sometimes you are so high that you just effectively just waste an entire pass, which is just a complete waste of DV, obviously. But we don't want to overcompensate and drive ourselves down to, you know, 70 or whatever kilometers. So let me roll back out now. But yeah, I should not have messed around with the AOA. Got distracted. I need two pilots. I need a second pilot, somebody to pay attention to the stuff that needs to be paid attention to while I'm messing with other things. Alright, so now we're pretty much going to drive on this line. Alright, so we just did pass the node. Yeah, this pass is not going to be as good as the other ones, so... Well, maybe it will. We're at 35. And so ideally... If we, if we want to do it, if we want to do as good as we did last time, this should be at least 30 by the time we're done. Okay, and rotate out a little bit. Because we are past the node at this point, so there's no point in going any lower. Watching my apoapsis. Take a sip of water. Yeah, I don't think we're going to get as much gain on our relative inclination this time as we did last time. So, lesson learned. Let me go ahead and look at that AOA, though. So, okay, so it's, instead of going between 15.1 and 15.2, it's going between 15.0 and 15.1, so it is better. But now, don't touch it. All right, we're past we're past the node now, so we're go we'll go ahead and roll, start climbing out. So we're at 75 kilometers coming up on 76 kilometers. We're climbing out at 30 meters a second. Rate is still coming down, so that's good. APA is coming up to 100 kilometers. So this pass is almost complete. Okay, just a little bit longer here. And it's been working out pretty well that when we end our APA on around 260, that seems to be working out pass after pass. So I'm just going to keep doing that. All right, so rate is still coming down, so we're at 32 on the relative inclination. So we've come down oh, by 30 degrees, plus. so that's really good. And we've only spent around 1,000 delta V to do that versus, you know, half of 8,000. So, you know, this is a huge savings. All right, let me go ahead and, uh, let me just go ahead and pause right here where we're at and switch camera views. So that's going to wrap it up for this video, this part, and when we come back we're going to continue this pass and we will uh, do our little bit of calculation to find out what this pass ended up costing us, see how much gain we got overall, and then we will continue on and do the next pass. It's looking like it's going to take two more passes after this one, maybe three, so, uh, so we're just going to keep grinding away. Leave a like on the video, leave comments down below, let me know what you're seeing that I'm not seeing because sometimes I get so tunnel visioned on something that I'm concentrating on that I'm just missing what else is going on. So let me know whatever else you caught. 
and I will see you in the next part.